What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to talk about periodization and we're going to talk about the history, the origins, definitions, some of the important tenets and concepts and hopefully give you a better understanding of how you can apply this principle of training to hypertrophy related outcomes. So firstly, the definition of periodization is the planned and deliberate manipulation of training variables in order to magnify adaptations, minimize injury risk, monotony and strain, and to peak performance on a given day. The histories and origins of periodization are founded way back in 1911 with Frederick Taylor's scientific management principles where he aimed to increase the efficiency and productivity of uh, operations in the industrial trade. Now, his ideas and concepts were later taken by Henry Ford, and we all know how successful Henry Ford was, and then later applied in the Soviet Union five-year uh, template. In 1936, we had a very, very important revolution in our understanding of stress with Hans Selye's gas model, which elucidated how we respond to stress, and that was used as the backbone for periodization in applying a stress and managing fatigue so that we can recover and seek adaptations. In 1952 to 1956, some pretty clever fellows did some research on the Olympic athletes. This was Matiev and Bompa, looking at uh, the performance of Olympic athletes from the periods of 1952 to 1956 to see who was successful and who wasn't, and they found that those who were more successful in the Olympics were those who planned their training. And then we've seen from there in the 80s that periodization uh, traditionally took place uh, in a very linear fashion. So it started with higher repetitions, moving down to lower repetitions with an increase in intensity, and this was the formal introduction of periodization into strength training. The basic tenets of periodization are that we want to plan and organize our training, we also want to have time frames for specific targets that we want to prioritize and focus on to develop fitness qualities in a sequential order, for example, endurance, then hypertrophy, then strength, then power. We have structured progression schemes in order to increase our fitness, and we include variation to minimize monotony, strain, and the wear of tear that comes with repeatedly exposing the body to the same stress. And most importantly to periodization is that it is goal oriented. We are looking to achieve a certain goal and periodization and planning everything around our training can help us achieve the specific goals that we want. Now the time frames that we have for periodization are firstly the macro cycle, which is your big picture plan, generally six to 12 months, even longer. Then we have the meso cycle, which is generally weeks and months. We then have the micro cycle, which is a weekly period, and then the workouts are within that period. And all periodization looks to do is manage the training stress and the variables within training across each of these time frames to ensure that we're achieving progress at a desired rate, we're managing our fatigue, and we're not burning out. And some models that we have for periodization are linear. In fact, all models of periodization are linear. Some are just, however, non-linear in those acute time frames, but should be linear over longer time frames. We have block and various other connotations such as daily undulating periodization, all these sorts of things. But in essence, periodization is seeking to have a sequential and logical increase in training stress towards a specific fitness target and managing fatigue along the way. And in powerlifting and strength oriented sports, we see this interplay between the two principles, specificity and variation, really manifest themselves as it relates to periodization. For example, with a powerlifter, they will start months out from their competition with a very general preparatory phase. They would then move into a more specific phase and then they would peak for competition and this might look like doing high bar squats in the moderate rep ranges, so 6 to 12 reps, then low bar squats in the 5 to 10 rep range, and then moving down to 3 to 5 reps and then a period of time before their competition of 1 to 3 reps. Now the difference with hypertrophy goals is that we are not seeking to maximize performance on a single day. Rather, we are looking to build and accrue muscle tissue over long periods of time. So therefore, hypertrophy goals are a lot less specific than that of any other sport. So we have a lot more flexibility with how we apply the concept of periodization. Now, more importantly to this discussion is that when we incorporate periodization, we just need to uphold those fundamental tenets. So we wanna have planning and organization, we wanna to seek to maximize fitness qualities in a sequential and logical order, and we need to ensure that we're not getting injuries, we're not burning out, and we're enjoying our training. So that is all that periodization is looking to achieve 
for hypertrophy goal. Now, in terms of the literature, it is unknown whether a periodized plan is superior to a non-periodized plan for hypertrophy. The evidence is quite clear when it comes to strength. However, for hypertrophy, there are a number of limitations in the studies. Number one, they're generally on untrained individuals. Number two, the studies aren't long enough. They're generally six to 16 weeks. And the third is that they don't standardize the protocol for the most part, which makes it a little bit harder to tease out whether or not there's a statistically significant benefit to a periodized plan versus a non-periodized plan. However, this isn't to say that we shouldn't periodize our training for hypertrophy goals because it may indeed promote a structured increase in the training stress and help us manage fatigue. And that is super important, irrespective of your goal. And here is an example periodization model that you can use in practice. And we adopted this model from Dr. Mike Isratel, so credit to Mike. And that would be having the first mesocycle being in the five to 10 rep range. For example, having a heavier focus on the squat, second, uh, focus would be the leg press and then third would be a leg extension and then in the second mesocycle we would have an emphasis in the 10 to 20 rep range where we would prioritize the leg press first the squat second and the leg extension third and then in that third mesocycle we would spend some time in the 20 to 30 rep range where we would have the leg press then the leg extension and then finally the squat as our order of priorities for our exercises. And the way we would separate our volume across those exercises would just be to bias more of our volume towards the first priority exercise and less towards that final priority exercise. So guys, I hope you found this video informative. If you did, give it a like, comment below if you have any questions, and we'll speak to you all next time.